Hello Hopium Addicts and welcome to Breaking the Cycle. My name is Steven, this is episode 2 and this week we're going to continue on where we left off discussing the amazing book by Elaine Gottschall, Breaking the Vicious Cycle. I'm going to flesh it out a bit more, we'll talk about the science behind the book, the types of carbohydrates you want to have, the types you want to avoid, the foods that you're going to have, um, my personal preferences when it comes to things like breakfast, um, little tips and tricks. I'll also include a load of uh, resources in the description below and we will discuss the intestine and the process of breaking down sugars and breaking down carbohydrates. So let's get into it. Alright, so um, you can just jump onto the internet there and go to breakingthevicioucycle.info that has basically all the information that you're going to need with regards to breaking the vicious cycle um, it tells you where you can buy the book uh, it goes in, there's all research and news um, the illegal and illegal list which we'll get into in a little bit um, like as you can see here uh, it's been shown to have a drastic effect on uh, children and people with autism as well um, it, it really is an amazing diet um, I just wanted to say as well like you know it's called the SCD protocol or whatever like the specific carbohydrate diet but it's not really a diet like it's more it's more like a um, a lifestyle you know and like I said the other day you have to basically change a lifetime worth of habits uh, like for instance you know one thing that was always a struggle for me with this specific carbohydrate diet is um, it's breakfast you know breakfast is traditionally for me you know it's always been tea toast cereal you know straight off the bat cereal can't have it can't have any grains plus it's loaded with sugar most of them um, milk can't have the milk has lactose in it which is sugar we'll get into that now in a minute uh, toast, obviously toast is bread, so that's we so that's you. So, like, what are you talking, how are you going to have uh, breakfast, you know, people are busy, everybody, I don't know about you, so I get up 6 o'clock in the morning, well, half 5 in the morning, I'm on the road at 6, and I'll get back till 6. Last thing I want to be doing is, is, is prepping a big, uh, complicated um, breakfast, you know, it's, it's just not really viable, so... That's one thing that you really need to think of. Uh, personally, what I've done is just start doing smoothies. They're quick and easy. Just jump into the nutri bullet. You know, a bit of almond milk, banana, some probiotics in there, a few berries, whatever. Bulk it up. Uh, just make sure that it's obviously consistent with the um, legal and illegal list. But yeah, get it in. Brr, jazz it up there for a couple of minutes and then you can just have it on the way to work or once you get into work or whatever you know it's just quick and easy and it's, it's pretty tasty as well like you know um though i miss cereal 100 <laughs> percent you know i mean i'd rather have tea and toast and all that like but what are you gonna do like you gotta just stick to the uh, diet as best you can or the lifestyle should i say but anyway if you want to this website it has all the information that you're gonna need the book that i showed you the other day um is years old you know as you can see here this book is uh, being updated, it'd probably be more modern, have some modern uh, sources and research papers and stuff would be discussed in it, I would imagine. So do yourselves a favour if you haven't done it already, go out and get this book. So what I'm going to do, um, and one of the main reasons that I started this channel was, you know, like I said the other day, was to uh, keep myself honest, you know. So I'm figuring if I get on here and... Uh, go through these videos and you know it's a, it's a case of practice what you preach you know um, so what I'm gonna do after this weekend is it's Friday today on Monday I'm gonna go full because I'm not doing full S SCD at the minute so I'm gonna go full SCD again I wanna get myself straight I'm sick of it uh, I keep slipping up and having stuff I shouldn't have and whatever I, I'm just over it like so I'm going to uh, do the uh, intro diet and basically what I'll do, I'll, I'll jump on here and I'll discuss how I'm going, how I'm feeling, the effects it's having. What I'll do actually as well is I'll probably weigh myself before I start and then try and track 
my weight as well, mood, all that kind of stuff. So um, at least then you'll be able to get an, an idea of what it's like, what I'm what I'm eating, um, and the the purpose of doing the intro diet is basically to starve off all the bad microbes that are after more than likely overpopulating your small intestine. Um, later on, I'm going to discuss SIBO, and, uh, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and um, the potential treatments for that. But as it stands at the moment, I'm just going to stick with the SCD diet. I'll go back around and do the intro diet, probably do that for a week, and then try and stick to the SCD uh, diet, the legal illegalist, uh, as religiously as I can. Let you all know how I'm going. Hopefully you'll do the same, and you'll get the benefits. From it. So, one of the main things in the book that it discusses is um, sugars, you know. So, carbohydrates, if, if you don't know, are basically just sugars. They're broken down inside the body. Um, like lactose, the, the, the clue is in the os, you know, like sucrose, the lactose, fructose, all sugars, different types of sugars, but all carbohydrates, you know. So, um, you have uh, monosaccharide, uh, diasaccharide, polysaccharide. They're the three ones that it really c concentrates on in the book. Um, so if you have a look here, um, so types of sugars, right? So here we are: monosaccharides, disaccharides, polysaccharides. So mono, obviously, being one, uh, it's a, si a simple sugar. So this is the one that we're most interested in because our body's able to break it down readily. It gets broken down and digested in the small intestine. Um, the uh, villi and microvilli, which we'll discuss now in a minute, are able to just readily absorb the single sugars. You get all the nutrients that goes into your bloodstream, your body loves it, it's all great. So, uh, three of the common um, types of monosaccharide are fructose, glucose, and galactose. So, um, yeah, so this one here is the same as well, like they built mammals' milk and that, but uh, diasaccharide, which is lactose, it would, that's what's in. Uh, cow's milk you know so diasaccharide basically it's the chemical uh, composition of the actual sugar so it's like two sugar molecules you know so the microvilli are able to break down the single sugar because um, they can just absorb them readily they uh, latch on to the microvilli which are like little fingers I'll show you now in a sec and uh, basically just breaks it down pulls it into the intestinal wall and then in through your body and off she pops um, when it's a diasaccharide, it can't really break it down as well. So um, what happens is it, it moves past the small intestine and then on to the large intestine, which is um, naturally full of uh, microbiome. So there's not really supposed to be that many in the small intestine. There's a load of uh, biome or bacteria, little, little guys, because our bodies are made up basically of other uh, creatures if you want like you know it's it, it's it's crazy when you think about it, like we're 90 something ridiculous like we're 95 percent microbes you know it, it's mad so it goes into the diasaccharide will go past your small intestine doesn't get broken down properly especially if your microvilli are damaged which is probably the case if you have diarrhea and stuff um they go down into the large intestine they ferment they create methane hydrogen gas you get all that bubbling cause diarrhea cramps all that sort of fun stuff so basically you want to stay away from the micro saccharides uh, and on this page here it talks about uh, oligosaccharides which is just basically uh, a small number of monosaccharides joined together they don't discuss that in the book i don't know if they do in the new book maybe they do but for our purposes we'll just skip past that one they do discuss polysaccharides which is basically you have the monosaccharide which is one uh, sugar you got diasaccharide which is two molecules and then you got polysaccharides it just means many so it can be a chain of different saccharides and you can see here you got the starch cellulose pectin glycogen all this stuff is really really hard for your body to break down if you're suffering with uh, chronic diarrhea whatever the case may be crohn's colitis whatever you can break these foods down so the whole purpose of the SED diet is to give your um, body the most simple foods possible so that I can just readily absorb them then you're starving out all the bad uh, bacteria and, and good biome they can feed on the sugars they don't generate that gas you don't get the bloating you don't get the, the uh, diarrhea cramps all that stuff so 
that's what we're after at the end of the day, you know. <coughs> so, if you look here at the uh, small intestine, you can see you got the intestinal wall, and then here is the villi, and then on the villi, you've got what they call microvilli. So, um, you can see it better here. So, these villi, this is all on your intestinal wall. These two larger ones here are your villi, and then these little fellas here with the little fingers, that's all your microvilli. So what happens when you have um, an intestinal disorder, these microvilli get damaged and the saccharides can't latch onto them. These uh, microvilli have loads of um, enzymes that help to break down the saccharides and then let them leach into the villi and then off goes into your bloodstream and fuels your body. Um, so you can see it better here. You see all the cells. It goes in through the microvilli, gets absorbed into the cells, broken down further. Off it goes into your, into your body, into the bloodstream, and off it goes. So, with the SCD diet, um, there's plenty of information that's available on the internet. I'll have all the links to this stuff in the description if you just want to go and have a look at it, whatever. Uh, feel free. So. This is our allowable foods list, so they have like a legal or illegal list basically. So this is your Bible, you know. So after the, um, after the, where are we? I go on to this one here first. This is the intro diet, right? So we'll start here because we're going to do the intro, intro diet first. And then after that, then we'll move on to the SCD food list, which is all your legal and illegal stuff, the food that you're going to eat from that point on so there's there's a few weird things in here I'm not gonna lie to you like dry curd cottage cheese when I read that I was like what is, what is that I've never even heard of it you know and it's hard to get I can't get it anywhere to be honest you know Um. so anyway this is this is what you're gonna eat for a week seven days five days it's not very exciting I'm not gonna lie to you but it has to be done just to starve off those um, bad bacteria, basically, and give you, give, set you up for the best possible, uh, best possible outcome going forward. So, I like my eggs; they're easy. Uh, the dry curd cottage cheese, depending on where you live, you might be able to get it. Um, as far as now, it's just it's just like cottage cheese, but it's just slightly different somehow. So you're allowed to have um, grape juice or apple cider unfortunately not the alcoholic type uh, and it's cold pressed you know so mix it with half and half of water that would have monosaccharides in it so it's easy for your body to break it down I think it breaks it down into glucose which is great fuel for your brain and um, it's easily digestible you know so it says here uh, there's a list for more allowable juices there's actually an orange juice that you can have um, I think it's Tropicana they do 100% pure orange juice. There's no added sugar, no bad stuff in it. So that's that's pretty good, you know. These little wins, you gotta take the little wins when you're doing the SCD diet, cause um, it can it can be quite difficult. So uh, the chicken soup, the chicken soup's actually lovely. Um, there's a bit in it, like you you get yourself a cooked chicken, whatever. Obviously, you wanna set yourself up uh, for success. So you know if you can afford it, organic's the way to go. Have yourself a nice chicken dinner or whatever on uh, on the Sunday, and then um, use the carcass to make your broth, like bone broth, basically. You know, obviously when you're buying the chicken, you don't want it to have any stuffing in it. The stuffing's got to be full of breadcrumbs. That's no good for you. So even if, excuse me, even if you just buy your chicken yourself, cook it yourself, and then after you're done, bang it into the um, into the pot and cook it down, make a nice chicken soup out of it. You put plenty of herbs and spices in there, it's actually really nice and it feels real hearty, you know. It's something to look forward to, especially when you're doing the intro diet. Um, broiled beef patty or broiled fish, you know, the excitement. It's uh, basically just just mince, mince meat and fish. It's clean eating, That's just keep reminding yourself that it's good in the long run, you know. So the cheesecake, you can click onto these links here. Um, I'm pretty sure the cheesecake is made out of this dry cottage cheese. 
I've never bothered with the cheesecake to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and then you can make gelatin using your grape juice or your apple cider, just mix it with the gelatin sheets that you can get in the supermarket. And uh, you can put honey in, that's one good thing, at least we're allowed to have honey. It's a monosaccharide. Uh, I use honey in the coffee and that. Um, Elaine says they shouldn't really drink coffee, I'm hopelessly addicted to coffee. So that's going to be a struggle for me. I might go on to the green tea, um, see how that goes. But I'll do it after. I might even just try and kick it for the week that I'm doing the introductory diet. See how I go. It'll probably be a nightmare to be around, but we'll see how that goes. So that's it, right? <laughs> this is your selection. Party time or what, like? But um, and then the dinner is like variations of the above. So that's what you got. There's your options for your introduction. Introduction diet. Um, it is what it is. You're only doing it for a week and you'll feel great after and plus you won't have any diarrhea, you won't have any bloating, cramps, all that kind of stuff. Everybody's different, like I said before, I'm no doctor, this isn't medical advice, this is just me just talking about how uh, the diet works for me personally. So so that's that, so then once you do that for a week or so, you're going to be strung out for a bit of proper food, and then you come back to our SED legal and illegal list. So, um, as you'd be happy to see, we've got some alcoholic beverages that we can have, but it's pretty much no beer, um, and it's all everything in moderation, you know, like, uh, but gin is all the rage nowadays, you can have your little glass of gin with a petal of rose in it, or whatever they do nowadays, a bit of whiskey, you know, whiskey, soda, water, and lime, that's my personal favourite, um, just sip away on that, it's hard to just sip away on whiskey on like, but it can be done. So you'll see here, in the, the fruit, fruit is your go-to, I find, and I've got a sweet tooth, and uh, the fruit is just great, you know, like, and after a while, you start really craving these things when you're on this diet, and um, plenty of dairy, you can still have blue cheese, if you're into that, personally, I think it's, it tastes like petrol, but uh, each to their own and all that. Um, cheddar cheese you can get and it's all about buying the quality stuff as well you know there's our friend the dry curd cottage cheese so you have options there you know like it's not it's not a, a really really strict well it is strict that's not the wrong way or that's not the right way to say to describe it but what i'm trying to say is you have options there's plenty you can eat like all, all these meats no problem like can eat you um we go, we got coconut milk, that's all the rage nowadays. Green tea, which is what I'm going to be uh, drinking now, coming up this week. Peppermint tea, great if you have cramps or anything, get that into your seeds, you know. And you can see nuts and seeds. Now, cashews are actually a legume, I'll have you know. So, I don't do cashews, um, as, although they are really tasty. There's another guy called uh, Dr. Gundry who I've been getting into lately and um, he is a proponent for uh, the damage that lectins do and lectins, uh, they're basically like, the way, he the way he describes it is that they're a, a um, defense mechanism that's built into plants and beans and seeds and whatnot and it's it's there to prevent animals eating it, you know, that's the old plants they can't exactly stick up for themselves and get their hands up you know so they have to just use chemical warfare you know because there's been studies that have shown that the, the uh, lectins are actually quite damaging to uh, your intestines so I don't do cashews pretty easy just don't bother with them I'm gonna do more videos about um, Dr. Gundry and the uh, lectins and uh, the plant paradox is the name of his book but we'll do that further down the track and I'll just do a series of the SED stuff first and see how we go so with the oils one thing that i have done is i've got rid of all like sunflower oil and uh, canola oil i don't use them i just use olive oil i know people traditionally say olive oil isn't great for cooking or whatever but studies have shown that uh, the heating doesn't actually uh, do anything that damages the oil it doesn't uh, cause any issues in that regard so Olive oil is really good for you, I just smash olive oil all the time, so I don't bother with it. 
with coconut oil I sometimes bang that into the coffee like uh, like a bulletproof coffee MCT oil with a bit of butter and that it's um you know for the ketogenic diet I've done that in the past it's um it's all right you know also coconut oil is really good for uh, pulling uh, pulling in your in your mouth and just um just swishing it back and forth through your teeth for about 15 20 minutes and it really uh, pulls all the uh, toxins into the oil and also helps to whiten your teeth I've actually done that for a good while and noticed the difference in the colour of my teeth like becoming white. Great for hangovers as well, which is weird. It pulls all the toxins out. I don't know if it's a placebo effect, but who cares if it's a placebo effect? <laughs> if it gets rid of the hangover, like, you know. So, um, yeah, you can see there's, there's loads here, like, you know. thing is, you have to really make all the stuff yourself. Like, you can't go down to the Chinese. Go, oh yeah, look, it's it's all stuff that's on the legal list, and then they're after smashing a load of MSG in it or whatever. You just don't know what they're putting in it. Like, so you're better off just prepping everything yourself. And that's one of the biggest things, and especially for me, because I'm time poor. I'm a family man. I work basically 12 hour days. Uh, it's quite difficult for me to to prepare. So you, you kind of have to sacrifice your Sundays just to prepare yourself for the week ahead. You know. Uh, so you've got a, don't go near aspartame. It's just bad news. I don't I don't like it. It's up to you. I just use honey. Just use honey and everything. It's natural. The bees know what they're at. The, the natural stuff is the way to go. That's my opinion. Apple cider vinegar. I'm sure you've heard of the um, the health effects with that. A bit of that in the morning. Help to alkalize your body. Lots of studies show that apple cider vinegar is really good. Um, plenty of herbs and spices. One thing that they say in their book is not to use any of the mixed herbs, or um, you have to be careful of, like, say, chili flakes, because they put an anti anti uh, caking agent on it that keeps the flakes loose, so they don't all just stick together, you know. And that's usually a type of starch which you, you can't break down readily. It'd be a polysaccharide, I would, I would imagine. So you have to be careful with that. So if you can get fresh ingredients, all the better. But you can still use the stuff in the um, in the little jars, but just make sure that's just a single herb. All right. So here we are. All the stuff that we can't have. As you can see here, there's plenty on it. Oh, there's our mate, uh, MSG. Whatever it is, it makes things taste beautiful. <laughs> but uh, and all, the, if anybody tell you that it's not in it, all the Chinese places they use MSG. So don't don't fall for that one. Can't have hot dogs. <sighs> Devastated. So with the yogurt, better off making your own. They discuss it in the book. You can make your own yogurt. Uh, you're gonna t say, well, what are you about? Like you said, you can't have lactose. There's lactose in milk, lactose in yogurt. There is, but they uh, tell you to ferment it for 24 hours. What that does is, um, the little bacteria that are in the um, in the yogurt during the fermentation process, they break down the lactose and basically eat it all up. So by the time the 24 hours is over, there's actually not lactose in the yogurt and that is packed full of good probiotics. That's one thing that you really want to get on top of is the probiotics. And um, it's not actually that bad. You can get good yogurt makers nowadays. You just program it. There's a little bit of messing around. You have to heat the milk to like 85 degrees Celsius and then let it cool to below 40 degrees. Then you just bang it into your yogurt maker hit it for 24 hours, forget about it, it'll be done the next day. Um, so fruits and seeds, custard apples, no more apple pies and McDonald's. Um, flaxseed, which is weird because you're allowed to have flaxseed oil, but you can't have flaxseed. And flax is um, really anti-inflammatory, so I'm not quite sure, obviously they know they know what they're at, it must be a polysaccharide or something. Uh, seed butters. Another thing as well, just talking about lectins there a second ago, one thing that I, I use, I love my peanut butter, it's a go-to for me, full of protein, fills you up, it's easy for breaking in uh, work and that, but it's also a legume, it's not an actual nut, so what I've done is I've changed it to almond butter, it's slightly more expensive, but it's actually really tasty, so I don't use peanut butter, I recommend you do the same. Um, you can see here there's a lot of cheeses that you can't have, can't have ice cream, but I'm pretty sure you can have uh, gelato. You get a decent gelato, but again, you're gonna to want to make sure that it is, um, you know, 
that there's no added sugar and stuff in it so whether they'll know that or not I don't know but uh, tapioca flour so that's one thing that's always in gluten free stuff and a lot of people with Crohn's and colitis and that will always eat gluten free and think oh yeah it's gluten free so I'll, I'll be fine but it's not the case man really want to stay away from that I was devastated I, I thought spelt was fine I was eating spelt bread for ages and I was actually tolerating it pretty well but it's on the um, illegal list so I don't go near it uh, where are we aloe vera I remember I was because you read all different things on the internet and my stomach was sore one of the days and I read that aloe vera was great for um, settling down cramps and that I had a bottle of this aloe vera drink I was in bits so don't go near it uh, uh, everybody's different but we're sticking to the SCD protocol so just stick to it anyway I'll put the link in the description for this um, download it, print it off, that was that little book that I showed you um, in episode 1, that pilot episode um, just that's your Bible basically uh, where are we so you can jump onto the net as well and just go like a CD recipes and there's loads of websites that have loads of recipes funnily enough um, there's plenty there to choose from excuse my computer it's the slowest computer in all the land but um, there's plenty of recipes and the book actually has a lot of recipes as well and a lot of stuff but it's actually really easy here we go look SCD recipe a whole website dedicated to it again the links will be in the description so don't be afraid to jump on so what I'll do like I said I'm gonna um, jump on to the introductory diet on Monday uh, I'll probably just make a little quick video I don't know if I'll do it daily it's a bit of pain um, but I'll make a video on the Wednesday and then another one on the weekend or something like that and let you know how I'm going how I feel um, and yeah we'll take it from there so thanks for listening don't forget to like share and subscribe if you know anybody that has similar issues to myself and yourself or whatever flick it on and um, I encourage you to get this book and give this diet a go it's, it's really good so be interested to see how I go now uh, going forward so um, alright thanks very much good luck